Let's check on the Asian markets right now and see how they're doing. Uh, you've got uh, Shanghai in positive territory here, now up three-tenths of one percent. But the rest of Asia is uh, still hurting today. You've got uh, Australia down 1.4 percent, leading the losses in percentage terms. If you are looking for the next frontier market to invest in, Cambodia may just be the place to be. It's caught the eye of private equity investors, including our next guest. He's looking to raise a total of $100 million for his Cambodia fund and has raised about 10% of that amount so far. Thomas Hugger is partner at Leopard Capital. He joins us now on set. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. I don't think I have ever talked about the Cambodia uh, market or economy. Well, there isn't a stock market at the moment, but I think in all my years here at CNBC, I've never discussed Cambodia before. Uh, and it's not been on people's radar. Why is Cambodia attractive? Tell, tell me why. Yeah, that's uh, also what we, uh, focus, what we always experience, that people uh, never look at Cambodia. It's probably one of the country uh, foreign investors have never looked at. And we don't understand it because it's so attractive. It has a lot of things currently investors are looking at. For like example, it has natural gas, mm -hmm. it has big oil uh, reserves, it has uh, agricultural uh, potential. It used to be the breadbasket of uh, Southeast Asia. It has a young and uh, very cheap labor force. And also it has great tourist sites. So a lot of nice things. I think one of the concerns in the past uh, has been the political stability of the government in Cambodia and the viability of the government there. Uh, have things reached a point now where, at least on the political front, uh, laws are passed, laws are upheld, and that foreign investors have the confidence that they need to invest in Cambodia? Yes. I mean, with the help of, uh, of the IMF, of uh, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, a lot of uh, laws have been passed. I mean, you should not forget that uh, Cambodia is uh, also a member of the World uh, Trade uh, Union, and that was even before, the, before Vietnam, and that has really propelled the laws uh, in Cambodia. And there are now laws there, and, but of course it's a very young country, young system, and uh, the judges and the, uh, the, the government officials are not so experienced in implementing uh, these laws or using them. But that is one, one thing, so there are the laws and also the political stability. The government, uh, there were three elections every five years they have elections and they were peaceful and uh, democratic. And also this uh, coming 27th of uh, July there will be next election mm -hmm. and that we will give further stability and uh, in confidence to the international investors. Are there plans to open uh, any kind of uh, capital markets in Cambodia? I know they were talking about opening a stock market. When is that happening, if, if at all? The stock exchange uh, should be open on uh, 090909. Okay, so next year, September next year. Next year. Yes. All right, okay. Yeah. Uh, what has been the response so far uh, in terms of uh, companies listing on? I mean, what have you heard so far from either both on, on the investor side and on, on the side of companies wanting to, to get access to capital? Has the response been pretty good? I mean, there's a big need for uh, Cambodia on, uh, in every sector to raise capital because there's so much to do, the infrastructure and uh, uh, Cambodia needs a complete uh, new uh, setup of the country. And we expect there will be about six to eight companies will be listed within the first uh, few months uh, in uh, September next year. Okay. Your fund is looking to raise about $100 million. Uh, yes. Not very large in terms of, you know, when we look at the big global funds, uh, but a sizable amount if you're looking just at Cambodia alone. What sectors, what types of companies will you be looking to invest in? Is it mostly resources? Uh, we will uh, have a diversified uh, portfolio, and we, have, we are very keen on property, natural resources, of course, agricultural, consumption, finance. Okay, and uh, are any of these companies that you're looking to invest in uh, expected to go public? I mean, what's the exit strategy for some of these companies uh, or for you as an investor in these companies? Of course, I mean, the ultimate goal is to uh, exit through the stock market because mm -hmm. there you get the, the leverage and you the extra kicker for the investors that you get even higher returns. Okay. Let me tell you, you know, when, when I talk to people who want to invest in frontier markets, besides political stability as a big concern for them, uh, the other issue is transparency of the government and, and the bureaucracy there. Um, and I hear this a lot about the other markets, Vietnam, Pakistan, I mean, you know, even in some of the more developed emerging markets like Indonesia, there to some extent as yeah. well. Wh how does Cambodia fare? I mean, you know, that's got to be a concern in terms of transparency of the government there. Uh, Cambodia is completely open to the foreigners. Foreigners can own uh, almost 100% uh, of uh, everything. The only exception is land. And 
you can go to the government, you can present them your business case, how do you want to invest, and in most cases you even get a nine-year tax holiday. So they're completely open because they're so keen in uh, attracting uh, uh, foreign investments. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thomas. We it's appreciate it. Thank you very much Thomas for Hugger, being here. Thomas Hugger, partner there at uh, Leopard Capital, uh, talking to us about why Cambodia may be your next destination.